Are you unhappy with your life but can't figure out what needs to change? On today's episode of Coffee with Tea, we are talking about how to avoid burnout and make yourself a priority. So please, stick around and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because we're going to be talking to Miss Carla Hunt, and she's going to give you advice on how to eliminate burnout. But before we really dive into the conversation, I'd like to welcome Miss Carla to the, to the show. So welcome. Thank you for having me. So as you mentioned, I'm Carla Hunt of Prioritizing Peace. I'm a personal success and empowerment coach. I help busy entrepreneurs and professionals achieve success without sacrifice by preventing and eliminating burnout. So you can live your best life of ease and enjoyment. And unlike traditional personal development coaches that focus on how to be more productive, I empower you to transform your busyness into healthy relationships, financial freedom, and vibrant well-being, as well as guilt-free pleasure. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you for that that great introduction to who you are and stuff like that. And, you know, we would like to dive into the conversation and, you know, maybe give our listeners a little bit of a, a background as to how this subject really became a near and dear subject to you. So if you mind, you know, share what you feel comfortable, but how mm. did this really come about for you and how did it really maybe help you during this whole COVID, you know, as, as you know, we shut down and now we're opening it back up. So you know, taking what you learned, how was it able that you applied it and, and maybe, you know, manage this whole COVID, you know, yeah. for those who are still struggling? So my, well, my background, um, so my biggest motivator for starting my business are my values. I value my well-being, my enjoyment for life and my social relationships without feeling guilty about it. I have found that there were a lot of people that were just crushing it with their careers that they enjoy their fitness and healthy relationships. Plus they had time to actually enjoy life, but other people like myself were not enjoying life. And I just wanted to enjoy life with my family and my friends and in the process of chasing my dreams. So often the things that we value to keep us motivated, hustling and grinding are the things that were kept from in that process. So I was missing out on living because I was putting productivity above everything else, including myself. I was burnt out from not only, um, you know, working all the time, but I wasn't able to find that like work-life balance And I was just working extremely hard and putting in countless hours, trying to get a peaceful, balanced life and enjoy it and be around people. And for me, it was really put in perspective. Um, You know, when my dad had to retire early um, because he just, his health was in poor condition. And it also dawned on me that because my dad worked so hard and he was an over the road truck driver, we just don't have the relationship that I would like us to have. And like I said, we put work above our relationships. Like we we're doing it for our kids. Like we love our kids and we're doing it for them. But at the same time, we're neglecting the thing, very things that we love in the process. And for me, I know that I wanted to break that generational cycle of putting, you know, productivity above the things that I actually wanted. I didn't want to continue to create that gap of, okay, well, I'm going to just work really hard and hope that I manage to find a mate and a partner to build a family with. If I don't stop what I'm doing, I'm never going to find the partner because I'm not going to create the time. Right. So right, right. in this pandemic, learning these skills and recognizing the, you know, even seeing it from example, um, I started prioritizing myself, putting my well-being first, you know, working out at the beginning of the day, making sure that I do things for myself before I even, you know, check my phone and check my emails and then making sure to check in with myself. Have I eaten? Have I done things that I need to do before I start giving to others? Right. Cause we, especially women, we will give to everyone else, our children, our partners before we give to ourselves. And then we're left with an empty cup. 
So making sure I give to myself so I can better serve others. And then um, giving myself that time to actually do the things that I value with committing to social relationships and spending time with my family and my friends and looking for a partner, <laughs> things that I value <laughs> that I want instead of just saying, I'll eventually find it. Cause it was me putting things off till later. And it, that included my mental health, my emotional health and my physical health, my well being overall. So it was a lot of me reprioritizing things to make sure that I wasn't you know, putting myself in a situation to where I was going to get a a bunch of, you know, preventable health conditions and chronic illnesses that, you know, at a certain point might be too late to fix if I keep waiting, or that would be a very expensive thing to fix with our healthcare system. Right, right. You make a valid point, because like I said, burnout, uh, you know, it takes a toll on a lot of us. And like I said, I think, I think the COVID was like a, maybe like a breather, a shutdown yeah. that maybe you can stop and think, like you said, prioritize peace for yourself. So for those who, are, who really have maybe never really stopped to look at it, what does burnout look like and feel like to people? It, it comes in many forms, but um, it can look like depression in all honesty. So when you are not interested in what you're doing anymore, that, um, that, gross feeling of disinterest, right? So when you are burnt out, again, it can look like depression and it can mimic depression even. So when you are just that hopeless, helpless feeling of just like, I am just beyond words with um, (laughs) that burnout, but it also is just like that physical fatigue. So it is feeling, you know, really empty that, that drain feeling, but you're also restless. So like you can't sleep as well and feeling the restlessness there. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, I, I can, I, I can, I can see that. I see a lot and a couple of people that I know, but you know, they, they have to have their own realization. So, you know, we talk about self-care a lot and stuff like that. And a lot of people really, you know, I think they're starting to become aware of it, but there are still a lot of people who would say, you know, self-care is selfish. So what would your advice be for those who would say, you know, what uh, self-care, I don't understand the process of it. Can you explain a little bit about how the importance of self-care? Yeah. So my take on self-care is from a holistic standpoint. So self-care is not just bubble baths and spa days. It is so much more than that. So self-care is really doing things that are going to recharge you mentally, emotionally, and physically, but it's also doing things that protect you mentally, emotionally, and physically. So that's things that's managing your time, setting boundaries and adjusting your habits as well. And, you know, like we're often saying like, I don't have enough time to do something. And when you're doing self-care in this particular way and prioritizing yourself, you're going to have time to do the things that you want to do because you're setting boundaries and you're not overextending yourself because you're setting boundaries and you are also managing your time, which is a management of your commitments. So when you decide to say yes to something, you are on that other side saying no to something else. So you are being more conscientious of what you are choosing to agree to do or not agree to do when you are making decisions and putting things on your calendar. And it's really a better way to do less better so that you can recharge and refuel and not just say, I'm going to go to a spa day because that may not recharge you. Like recharging might be going for a run. Recharging for someone else might be like actually watching a cartoon. Like it's okay to watch cartoons and watch TV. Like some people are just like, well, that's not self-care. That's, that's, you know, wasting time. But if that is how you recharge is just being in front of the TV and doing nothing, that's okay. But we misconstrue what actually recharges us and the definition of self-care because mainstream is just like, well, just put some uh, cucumbers on your eyes and you'll be fine. (laughs) You're right. It's like a quick Band-Aid fix, you know, but they're not really, it's like, you know, you know, a Band-Aid. I I guess that's about the best way you can explain it. So. This is the part I want to remind everybody, if you're enjoying what Carla is putting down and you're already picking up the juicy gems like I am, please give us a thumbs up 
you know, perhaps leave a comment down below. And we're going to talk about how she took this leap of faith of, and, and, and now making this a priority. So before we go into that, what are like maybe three tips that you could share with somebody who can actually put something in place if they're starting to feel the burnout, you know, because you, you, you talk, your, your podcast uh, unapologetically unapologetically i can't say oh my goodness unapologetically <laughs> prioritizing peace <laughs> thank you miss carla because i'm struggling but yes you you make this a your business so what's maybe three quick tips that somebody could put in place right now to help you know figure out okay i'm going into this stress mode is yeah. there something you can share say no or at least <laughs> give yourself 24 hours to say let me think about it So you can give yourself the space to say no, should you not want to do something. And a lot of times, like we will say yes, because we're one, afraid to say no, or two, um, we just, we're, we all have so many big hearts. We're just big hearted people. And we're just like, I want to help, but we don't have the capacity to help everyone. And a lot of times we just have to say no, right. Say no. (laughs) No, it's a complete sentence. Yeah. (laughs) Um, and then do something for yourself, like really think about it. Like what is one thing? And I even struggled with this before. A lot of times when you do do like icebreakers, when you think about it in like at a new group or something, or back in college or high school, and they're like, let's introduce ourselves to the room. They're like, let's do an icebreaker. What's a hobby that you do? And I'm like, I work and sleep. I don't know what I like to do for fun. Like really sit down and journal and think about like what you used to do for fun as a kid that like you can still do as an adult. So I really like roller skating and that's something that I've gotten back into and I, I enjoy. And so really, even if you have to go do it by yourself, go roller skating, go do something that you enjoy by yourself and really tap into that as like your inner child, because we don't do that enough. We're just like, I only know how to work and sleep. I don't have hobbies. Go gardening. Like it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be a physical activity. You can garden. Like just even just sit outside in, you know, the the grass and just enjoy the sunlight. I was like, I will qualify that as gardening. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and like I said, we we're, those are just a couple of the tips that you can use right now that you can implement. And so, Miss Carla, you know, let's talk about how you took this leap into entrepreneurship. And, you know, you're and I, I love because we're, we're connected because we're fellow YouTube sisters. So, you know, I see you you do your, your podcast. How 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 long have you been doing it? And, you know, where can people find more information about, you know, what you share on your podcast? Yeah. So I have been doing it for 12 weeks. I've been doing it since about May and you can find me on the YouTube unapologetically prioritizing peace podcast. You can also find information on my prioritizing peace.com website. Um, I'm literally on almost all the websites at prioritizing peace, so Facebook, Instagram, even LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of the concepts are to the the revolutionary concepts to achieve success without sacrifice. So we talk about boundaries. We talk about technology boundaries. I literally just did an episode about saying no. Yeah. The art of saying no. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, that's, that's a whole other discussion, which we can always go down deep into. So, yeah, I, I mean, uh, when you, when people are thinking about, you know, let's talk, like, so taking that leap, because you took the leap from, from leaving your job to doing what you're doing full yeah. time. What, what made you decide, you know, this is the time and this was the time that you needed to do it for you if you don't, you know, mind sharing yeah. with those who are thinking about doing the same thing? Yeah, so it was a big decision. And I kind of touch on this in my hierarchy of needs episode, which I'm going to do another one to dig a bit deeper into this actual concept now that you mention it, but it would, it's really transitioning away from like what I need and like what I want. Um, so my, my needs were being met and it's really a mindset shift of all of my needs are being met on the basic level of the hierarchy. Like my, I have safety, I have shelter and I do have, you know, a, a reliable, source of income. You know, I'm just scared. 
a little bit to make this leap from, you know, what we consider reliable income. We consider being employed by someone else as reliable income, but the pandemic has shown us that that's not reliable because tons of people were laid off in an instant, like literally in an instant, people were just like sent home and not to ever return. So that's being said, that's not a reliable source of income. Me working for myself is reliable because I know what I'm capable of and I know I will show up every day to do what I need to do to make sure I'm getting reliable income. So with that being said, I was like, do I trust myself more than I trust this external person who could at any point in time decide to let me go because they can't afford me through the pandemic? I mean, in my particular situation, I was one of those, um, what do they call it? The... I'm going to use the word important because I can't think of the right word that they've been. Oh, essential. Yeah. Essential. I was an essential, um, employee. Um, but beyond that, even being an essential employee, I think part of it being me being essential led to burnout, which I was like, I don't want to be essential. (laughs) Right. right, I want to work for myself because even then things can still change because, you know, once the pandemic is over, well, that changes things in a different way that I'm no longer essential. Does this position need to be needed anymore? I was like, the budget could shift, shift then at that point. I was like, the essential piece is gone, so we'll move money. At any, at any given point in time, things could change. So me putting you know, my fate and my destiny and my security in someone else's hands is what really made me feel comfortable in shifting because I wasn't happy. I wasn't living. I was spending countless hours, you know, 12 or more a day working, you know, from home for someone else doing things that weren't giving me, you know, peace of mind, enjoyment and pleasure. I mean, I was doing a function for a greater purpose. Yes. But it wasn't, you know, my vision, my goal and my purpose. Right, right. I I love it. And, you know, we're we're getting down to the last couple of minutes and there's always one key question that I always ask is what's the one thing if nobody hears anything else that you're talking about today what's the one thing you want them to take away from this interview handle yourself with care and kindness right right that's that's the words of knowledge right there yeah I was like yeah. We, we do not handle ourselves with care we will always default to productivity and put ourselves last. So handle yourself with care above everything else. And it, everything will come into alignment when you start handling yourself with care. I love it. Thank you. And Ms. Carla, I know you mentioned it before, but this is the one signature question that I want to make sure everybody understands. Where can people find you, your services, and what you offer? Yes, at prioritizingpeace.com. And you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Prioritizing Peace. And you can also find me and my information on the About page on the Unapologetically Prioritizing Peace podcast. Thank you. Thank you. And this is an unofficial question, which I probably should make it an unofficial question because I always ask, would you be willing to come back and we dive more into, you know, more conversations? Because like I said, this is just an intro. Yes, I would absolutely love to come back and dive deeper. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank you for sharing your time, your, your wisdom and, and your insights that you have brought. Thank you so much. Cause I, there's a lot of people who probably don't even realize they have burnout. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to remind everybody again, that feedback is welcome. Emails. If you have any guests or show ideas, please remember all the links that Carla mentioned will be posted down there in the description box. So please check out those juicy gems down there in the description box. And again, if you enjoyed watching, please give us a thumbs up. And if you enjoy all the insight that as Carla shared and you want to continue to see what everybody else is bringing to the table, please hit that subscribe button over there. And remember, remember, take things in stride, go with the flow and create your own path. And we'll see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right. Bye-bye. 
Hi, everyone. This is Tanya again, popping in to say thank you for listening to today's show. Coffee with Tea interviews are always free. And if you're enjoying the wisdom and insights that are being shared, please stay and grow with us and show your financial support. You can buy us coffee or become a monthly supporter. Links are posted in the description box. And again, I wanted to personally say thank you for tuning in.